Today we're making spring flower DIYs. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. This project is going to be a flower box. Okay y'all, today's video is sponsored by Essential Stencil, a beautiful farmhouse style stencils and they are a family owned business. This is how my package came. Very nicely packaged in a bubble mailer. And then inside of this cardboard envelope, everything is nice and safe and secure. We got a little burnishing tool or squeegee, some people call them. I got two sets of stencil paint brushes. I got these little thin ones for bridging the gaps. All the information's on the back on how to use them. I got these cute little stencil brushes. You get information on here too about the brushes and the different sizes. A small pack of six stencils, and these are all so cute. They all have those little sayings that you've probably heard from us down in the South. Look at these beautiful floral and butterfly prints. Oh my goodness, these are stunning. These are rub on transfers. They are spring flowers and butterflies. Perfect for spring. I got some sunflowers because if you've been watching a while, you know I love my sunflowers in the summertime and in fall. And these are gorgeous. Look at these birds. The birds actually have three pages in there and they're like a vintage type pr um, print, I guess you could say. They are stunning and we'll be taking a closer look at all of these in a minute. Look at the color. Even without my glasses, they all just pop. They're so crisp and detailed. So now for the stencil sheets, we have the sunflower market. And then on the back, the truck with the sunflowers. You get two of these in here. These are large stencils. You can make some beautiful things with these. Here's another sunflower. Gorgeous. Two of them in here. And then on the back is this little print of flowers. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these because we're going to be using a few of them. They come with their own little inserts. Look how strong this stencil is. Very flexible. This black paper that you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. Here's a close-up of these beautiful rub-on transfers. And the other page. We're going to be using these in this first project. Look at all these cute sayings. Sweet tea, sweet southern mess. Hey y'all. Southern charm. And give me some sugar. Y'all are gonna be seeing me use quite a few of these. And there's bless your heart. I say that a lot too. Let's look at these brushes. Now, these are very nice, very well made, and they are protected with threading and with these little caps that go over them to keep them safe and secure in there. These are very dense brushes. I love this. I love the wood handles too. Look at the point on that. So we know we're gonna be using this stencil as, to, as well. Okay, so we're starting this project now. We're jumping on in there. I got some wood boxes. These came from the thrift store, but you can get something like this at Dollar Tree and at any craft store. I'm gonna use three of those. I have some flowers that are gonna match our beautiful rub on transfers in the background. So I have yellow, just kind of picking up the colors in there. Good variety, so you can really kind of go at it with the colors and the different types of flowers. Got some Dollar Tree and thrifted florals because you know that's what we do on this channel. It's all about saving money. All right, let's take these boxes and get started on those. We're gonna put these together to make one large looking planter. So we're gonna use some wood glue and some hot glue to put them together. So I've just laid the sides up that I think is the prettiest side that I want to be facing outward. Then I'm going to add some of this wood glue. It's gonna keep it a long, hold and then the hot glue is going to be used just to hold it in place until the wood glue can do its thing. I'm going to line those up together, press them and hold them. You can use some clamps to help hold them together. Then I'm going to flip that one to the side 
So we're keeping that pretty side up. Gonna add some wood glue and then a little hot glue and turn it back on its side so we have all the pretty sides outward. You can then take a clamp and clamp those together or hold them or put something heavy on them and turn them sideways. Give them a chance to dry. Then as usual with these little wood boxes, they're not all the same dimensions. So this one's sticking out just a little bit. It's got kind of a rough edge. I'm just gonna take my little emery board here and go over that to make it nice and smooth. I don't want anything to interfere with my transfer when I get that on. So it's nice and flat. I'm gonna go over the entire thing so you don't see those sanding marks as much. Just gonna go all over it, hit the outside, the edges. It's gonna give it more of a rustic look. It's gonna peel off a little bit of the edging and give it that look that I love so much. Now I'm gonna choose which of the transfers I wanna put down by just feeling here with my hand to see what's going to fit so I can get the most of the picture in there. And I think that this one is gonna be the best. The purple with the little daffodil. So I'm just gonna cut it out here to make it a little bit easier to work with. These styles are so on trend. I really, really like the way these look. Beautiful. And you don't have to do farmhouse to use these stencils either. You can use them whatever style that you like and make it your own. So I'm gonna kind of stent, just kind of eyeball it, I guess you could say. And I'm going to put it down on my boxes and then start burnishing it or rubbing it down. Now the little um, plastic squeegee that came with it is not gonna work as well on a wood surface because it's not as smooth. So I found in those circumstances, if I use a popsicle stick to put that down, it works so much better. Lift it up slowly, and if there's any areas that are still stuck down, just lay that stencil straight back down and just go ahead and burnish over the top of it. Look at the color in this beautiful transfer. It is just popping on that wood. It didn't blend all the way in. It's just standing out on its own. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm just gonna take that backing there and just continue to burnish it down until everything is nice and smooth. You don't see any edges. It looks hand painted. It's just really pretty. So now I'm just gonna cut bits and pieces off of here to show you that you don't have to use a stencil in its entirety. You don't have to use the whole thing in one spot, cut it into pieces. You can even mix up your transfers and use different styles and patterns together. You can put wording with your, you know, with these pieces if you want to. And you can even combine your stencils and your transfers in one project. Talk about economical, yeah. I'm gonna add a couple more of these beautiful yellow daffodils. It's just screams spring to me. And by the way, the, the products that I'm gonna be using in this video, so the stencils and the transfers, they're gonna be linked for you down below so that if you're interested, you can check those out and maybe even purchase them if that's what you decide to do. And you can get a 10% discount if you use M-I-M-O-10 when you go on over there. So now I'm gonna sit this butterfly down right in the top of the daffodil. And it's going to look like it was meant to be there, like it came that way. They layer very nicely, nothing lifted up. And the, the little backing came off smoothly. I didn't lose a leg or an antenna or anything on this beautiful butterfly. I wanna take the opportunity to thank Essential Stencil for seeking me out and for choosing me to test their products. They are high quality and very easy to work with. And for people who love to have beautiful pieces, but maybe they don't like hand lettering or trying to do fine details with little brushes, you can get that look with these transfers. Let's add on another butterfly. Cause I'm really just digging, filling up this box with all kinds of goodness. Now, did you see I had to kind of reposition that? Before I pushed it down, I could easily pick it back up and did not lose not one piece. 
of that beautiful butterfly. Y'all be sure to check out their spring collection uh, for 2023. It's going to launch on the 10th of February and they've got everything you could think of that you might need for spring or Easter like bunnies, flowers, bees, and so much more. And y'all please stay tuned because this summer I will be using the sunflower stencils. I use a lot of sunflowers and it is going to be so much fun. Maybe you could grab some and craft along with me. But since these are buildable, you can actually add more onto it. Say I needed a stem, so I just took another piece of a flower and I'm just kind of putting that down there to make the daffodil, rather than looking like it's just floating out in space. I want it to look like it is part of the arrangement that's in the center, if that makes sense to you. I'm gonna make this look like it came together. So I'm just adding it and making a little stem. Now that flower looks like it is part of it now, like it came that way. I'm going to add a little bit more. So just cutting off a piece of another flower. I can put that down on here. And this certainly looks like it could all be one piece, like maybe it even came as one piece. But I think that's the beauty of it. And if you don't want to use daffodils, you could do butterflies everywhere. You could have butterflies sitting in the middle of that daffodil that's in the center and not add the daffodils on the sides. You could use this little flower box and put some details on the side of the box. If you want to use this in the center of your dining room table, for instance, you might want to make this something that's two-sided so you can take some more of these, flip this box over, and do it on the other side. You could even take one of your stencils and go right over the top of a transfer with your stencil. You could put some wording on there. That would be very nice too. You just have so many options. I love that because it really does make it budget friendly that you can use these in a variety of ways without having to buy anything additional. So now we've gonna connect that by just cutting off a tiny stem from another piece and it looks like it belongs. So pretty, so, so pretty. So now let's put some flowers in here. I'm gonna take a little bit of this foam that I have and put it down with a little glue just so nothing is shuffling around in our boxes. And this is going to be what we put our florals in. This is not going to be a difficult floral arrangement. You can put it together pretty quickly. If you had a bunch of daffodils, you could use something like that, and that would be really pretty. You could use all daffodils, just stuff it full of yellow daffodils. Or you could use lavender, because there's a lot of purple. You can cut your Dollar Tree pieces apart, like I've done here. And then this is a thrifted piece. I'm gonna start off by adding one to each box of this bigger piece, and then we're gonna work around that. So these are gonna be our tallest pieces, and we're going to make sure that everything else is a little bit shorter, and we're gonna fill it out. I always like to keep in mind that whatever kind of a print, if I'm using a stencil or if it's paint, I want things to coordinate. So I think what you're seeing here is kind of a trend with the purple and yellow in this project. Purple, yellow, green. I think that screams out spring. I like to keep my floral projects pretty well balanced. Um, there are times when I like to get a little bit crazy with it, but you can pretty much see when you follow me here what I am doing. By all means, if there is a way that you prefer to do yours, you can certainly do it that way. I'm gonna add these little white pieces kind of to the front, little flyaways. It's got those little wispy pieces that come out of it. And continue to add around here and there. I do have some little pieces that look like lavender. And it sort of mimics what's going on in the transfer, which makes it fantastic. Think of how many ways that you could actually use these rub-on transfers because you can use them on wood, you can use them on paper, you can use them on painted surfaces. 
and they'll still stick down very well. Now I have a variety of purples. I have some that are a little brighter, a little darker, kind of how you would see it in nature. You know, some of the flowers are blooming as some of them are going back into the earth for nourishment for the rest of the plants. Pop some yellow, of course, in there. Some little ferny pieces. This is gonna give it a lot of texture. And then once we have all of these pieces down, we can add in the pink and the cream or yellow colored flowers, the bigger ones. We don't have as many of them, so we're just gonna give them a little place in the side, in the front, in the top, where they can get a little attention. If you don't use glue when you're doing your floral arrangements, you can very easily pull those out and reposition them. I like to do that because as I'm playing around with my projects, oftentimes I'll look at it from all sides like I encourage you to do, and I'll find something that doesn't quite look as balanced as I would like it. So then I can easily pull it out and move it. And then if you wanna make it permanent, you can add a little hot glue and put it back down in there. Yes, it does take a little extra time, but I think you'll be happier with your results in the end if you glue last. There was one little spot that needed something extra and I happened to have a fourth piece of that greenery to add right there. Fluff it all out, look at it from all angles, like I say, and make sure that it is exactly how you want it to be. There's no wrong here. Make it how you like it so that it brings you some joy. If you like this project, give it a thumbs up. The next project is a tag pocket. Now we're going to use one of the small stencils. I'm going to use two different brushes here. I'm gonna use some chalk paint and then it's in a green. I'm also gonna use some Krylon coral, some painter's tape and this is a thrifted sign. You can get these little tag signs though at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take this out, give it one coat, let it dry. We're gonna work on the stencil to just show you again how versatile these can be, these products can be. I'm gonna use some painter's tape and cover up the greenery part. I'm not gonna use that part on this project. It's beautiful and I will on another one. But just to show you, I'm gonna cover this up with some painter's tape. We're just gonna use the wording for this. And this way I don't accidentally get any of the paint down inside of the stencil part that we don't wanna use. So here's the tag and it's dried. Got some beautiful fabric from Dollar Tree that matches nicely, I think. Very springy. I'm going to cut this out to make it a little more manageable, I do wanna have at least an inch on the each side and on the bottom so that we can fold it over. Let's start with this stencil and let it be drying. I'm going to take some of this green and I am going to kind of offload a little bit of it and then I'm gonna pounce it up and down. Up and down, up and down. You don't wanna to get too close to the sides of the stencil where it might cause some bleeding underneath and a lot of people um, show that they use a something like Mod Podge to seal off the edges before they put their paint on, and you can certainly do it that way if you would like. But I do not notice a lot of bleed through with these. So maybe technique is to blame for some of that bleeding. But if there's any way we can help ourselves out, we definitely wanna do that, right? So here we are taking it off. And now these little brushes, these little pointy brushes are what you can use to, you can actually use it to fix where you've had some bleed through and you can connect your letters in the little gaps that are necessary with the stencil to hold it all together. You don't want it to be too floppy because they'll be breaking. So you can just fill all that in, get your lines nice and crisp and you can let it dry. Once it's dry, this is how it's gonna look. I am very happy with that result. Then I'm gonna take some faux greenery. This is some rosemary, eucalyptus, some of the pick we just used, and then some little spike from Dollar Tree. Just like little wildflowers, I guess. 
we're going to clip those off into a more manageable size. I'm going to use a very thin piece of this foam, which I have cut down. I'm going to hot glue it on here. I don't want my pocket to look flat or my stems to poke out. So this is going to give it a more full appearance and just, in my opinion, a better look. I'm going to lay this across. I'm making sure that I have a little bit that overlaps there so you don't see any of the foam. See there? Then I'm going to fold it over and, hi, there I am. We're going to glue it down. Always use your clamps if you need an extra hand. See, I have small hands and it's really hard to hold that that way for me. You're going to add some hot glue and push that down. Then you can move your clamp. Go over here and do this one too. And then if you have some extra you want to trim off, you can. Or you can take a piece of white paper and put over the back after you've got all your edges down to kind of cover that up. But it's not necessary if no one is going to see the back of your projects. Certainly if you're selling items, let's give them a good finished look so they'll keep coming back for more. I'm going to fold that edge over almost like wrapping a gift and add some hot glue so you got a nice edge there. And then we'll clamp it while we work on the other side. Same process, just going to fold that in and then flip it over. Now we have almost a little envelope on the front. It's dried, my glue is cool, and now the pocket is ready. So we're going to add a little extra embellishment with some of this beautiful cording or trim or whatever you want to call it. You can get some from the Dollar Tree. They have a variety of little trims and ribbons you can use, so if you don't like the trim, you can use a ribbon. I think this is pretty for spring and it matches the decor that I already have in my home. Press that down, then you can flip it over and glue down those edges right across the fabric that you already have down there. Now I pull my picks apart if they're plastic, if they are, if they have a piece of wire then you know you want to cut those off with some wire cutters. And I'm going to add a variety of those little pieces of greenery in the side. Again, if you don't glue them, you can still move them around because you see how part of that rosemary is kind of hanging over onto my y'all. Well, I want my y'all to be seen. So I'm going to make sure that I have everything put in place and moved over out of the way. I don't want to cover my stencil. That's the whole idea for this project and I want it to be seen. So I'm going to push things around, move them, pull them out, put them on the other side. See, that's just too big. So I pulled it out, and then I can just put a smaller piece in there if I want. If I want to leave it like that, I'll add my glue and let it dry. I can start adding in the florals. It's beautiful little spiky pieces. They actually match the color that is in the fabric that I got from Dollar Tree. And the fabric from Dollar Tree is over in the crafter square section. I know that sometimes with the spring decor they'll have the fabric over there, um, you know the themed fabrics, so just be sure you look both places if you want to find it. I'm going to add a smaller clump of greenery and florals on the other side. This is not going to be uh, symmetrical, but if you like symmetry, you can certainly do the same thing on each side. That is cute to me. That's cute. And it's small. So really, if you wanted to make it a standing sign, you could put a little block on the back so it would stand up. You could hang it around a lamp. You could take it to work and hang it off your desk. I want to make the hanger here from the same stuff that we used below. Just going to use a stick 
and poke it through there and then gently pull it so that I don't fray my trim or flip it over or bend it. I want it to be nice and neat. So I'm gonna fold it over on itself, add a little hot glue, and then pinch the sides together. Y'all please protect your fingers because you could definitely burn yourself like this. I generally am good about using my finger protectors, but there are times when I just get in the flow and I just completely forget. And I am in the flow today. So here is this project. I always appreciate a good thumbs up. How about y'all? My videos can be seen on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 Central Standard Time. The next is going to be the Wood Riser. This is a plaid board. We're going to use a beautiful, beautiful stencil on top. It's the large stencil. So you can see this came from a thrift store. It's got some glue on the back. I'm going to use three different purples and three different greens in a little variety. We're going to use some territorial beige, a little bit of water, some baby wipes. I'm going to take off my sticker and I'm going to lightly sand over this board. A lot of times when you get these, they need to be sanded on the top and the sides are sometimes very rough. I don't want to have a bunch of splinters in my fingers. I don't know about y'all. I'm gonna add some of that territorial beige down in this bowl. I'm gonna add a little bit of water and mix it up because I wanna make a stain. I wanna still be able to see the wood through this paint. So watering it down lets us use it as a stain that you can still see the wood grain through. I'm just gonna take that damp baby wipe and start putting this down on the board. I'm moving quickly because I don't want any of the paint to dry before the next section gets put down. Or you will have a bunch of lines in your paint and I want it to be a nice, smooth, even finish. Y'all see that line in the middle of the board? That wasn't even visible until I put the stain on there. Very strange. So once it's dry, I'm gonna take this stencil and I'm gonna kind of offset it, not on the center, but you know, to the side, picking the pieces that I want to be on the board because you don't have to use the entire thing. You can use little pieces. I'm going to use the same type of painter's tape. Mine comes from Dollar Tree and I've had no problems with it. This will cover up where I don't want paint and it's gonna help glue it down, well, tape it down to the board to hold it in place while we do the stencil. It's very important you don't move your stencil around when you are doing stenciling. You want everything nice and flat. So at this time with the big project, if you wanna use some Mod Podge, you can go ahead and put that on. So I've done one project without it and I'm gonna do this project with it. And then you're just gonna kind of put it on like you can, I painted it on some, like brushed it on, and on some of them I actually kind of went up and down, sort of stippled it on there to see if it would make a difference. And I have not seen that it made any difference one way or the other. It all turned out exactly the same. Let that dry. And then once it is dry, you're gonna put each of your paints down. You're gonna, you're gonna start with our greenery, our greens. So you're gonna put your colors down. You're gonna kind of tap little pieces and turn the brush into the little sections of paint. So you get a variety of color on your brush. Because in nature, often we see that things are different colors, right? Or maybe it's the solid color, but the way the sun shines on it, it gives it a different appearance. You see some as lighter, some is more into the shadows. And that's the look that I wanted to kind of achieve in this project. And you'll let me know at the end if you think I got that accomplished. So I'm just stippling just as we did before, up and down, up and down. You can go back over it and add a little more lightener or a little more darker, wherever you want to on those little pieces. I'm using my hand here to cover up where I don't want paint. And I'm just gonna go up and down here and you can already see that one section is darker than this section. I like it that way, I don't mind at all. You're gonna go ahead and do all of it this way. Just stippling it on. I'm doing the stems, the greenery, and the little part that is underneath, just underneath the flower. 
that's going to be green too. It's almost where the flower comes out uh, of the flower bud, right there. And the different size brushes work really, really great because you can get into different size areas. If you've got something really small, you can use a smaller brush. If you've got something larger, you can pick up a bigger brush to put more paint on. Now we've moved on to the purples, and you see how one side is light and one side is dark? Love that look. If you don't have a variety of paints and you want to do just solid colors, go ahead and do it that way. I just want to show you that you do have some options here. Not only that, when you get closer to the end of your project, you can go back in and add some finer detail work, which I'm also going to show you here in this video. I hope y'all are enjoying these items as much as me. I hope y'all like to stencil. I don't do a lot on my channel, but I should, because look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. The colors. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to take another one of those brushes. I'm going to add a little dark purple and just kind of add some little shadows here and there. I am not a trained painter, so I just go by my eye. You know, I go by how I feel and how I don't know. You know how it is with crafting. You kind of, and if you don't like it, it's just paint. Just go back over it. It's not a big deal. You can paint over it. But I wanted to add some shadows and some little lines on the petals. These look like little violets to me. And also, all the little gaps that are in the stems and the leaves, I left those in there intentionally. But if you wanted to bridge those gaps, go ahead and use one of those thinner brushes and connect all of those together. So once everything is good and dry, I'm going to take some of this antiquing wax, offload it on my chippy brush, and I'm going to start to age this. So I'm going to go across all the way across it. I'm going to get on the sides because the sides of this have uh, like a step down or a lip, and I want that to be to have a little bit of distressing on it too. If you don't like distressing, you don't have to do this at all. So this is what is going to be the top of our riser. I found these little, I don't know if they're drawer pulls. They have a little hole in the bottom. I'm not really sure, but I got them in a pack of six um, while I was out thrifting. So I'm going to dry brush these. I didn't didn't have to add additional paint to it or antiquing wax. I just used the same thing. You can see that I also um, colored the back of the board. We're going to use four of these for legs. They're going to be the little lifts on the risers. So since these little holes or screw holes are here already, I'm going to use those to put the wood glue in. These are sort of depressed in the middle, so the glue stays right where you put it. Then I am going to use some hot glue. And once you put that down, the glue that's in that hole, the wood glue, is going to kind of empty down and make contact with the board underneath to give you a very secure, hopefully permanent, fixation. And then I'm going to go around and do all the rest of them. Now, how I'm putting these in the corners, I just use my fingers to kind of measure the edge of the board and where I want to put the little foot or riser or leg or bead or door pull. Whatever you want to refer to them as. And I seem to do fine with that. It's a good placement. Now, if you have a weak piece of wood or a thin piece of wood, you want to go ahead and put some support in the middle if you're going to put anything heavy on your riser. Once it is glued, this is how it's going to look. See, you can add additional details if you'd like. Or you can just leave it plain. And you can use any color in any style. Here are the projects that we created using essential stencils, rub-on transfers, and their stencils. It is a very high quality, cost-effective way 
to bring some stenciling and transfers in your home to bring some variety to your crafting experience. You're gonna see me use these more. I absolutely adore them. If you have stayed this far, I want to say congratulations to you because I am going to be doing a giveaway because you stayed to the end and I appreciate you. I will be giving one crafty viewer one of each of the stencils and transfers that I used in this video so that you can make your own spring crafting beauties. All you have to do is comment, I love spring for a chance to win and see the pinned comments for further information. You can do it. I believe in you. We all have that crafting ability. We just have to nurture it to make it grow. And of course, having the right supplies doesn't hurt. I wanna thank y'all again for watching. I'd love it if you subscribe if you're new here to my channel. Be sure you check out the links below and I will see you again very soon. Bye.